and to share the video to your social media if you would like us to join, um, you know, to be more visible and uh, for more people to join. And to share the video to your social media if you would like us to join. Um... <coughs> So let me check how everything goes. Hello, hello everybody. We will see how the connection is doing today. Hopefully this time it's not going to be blurry. <laughs> For now it's clear and this is what we want. And of course, uh, uh, we are going to give ourselves a moment to um, make sure everything is okay. So <laughs> I will go and switch off the connection on the other devices so we have the most possible connection quality. Okay. Hello, everyone. We are here to talk a, a bit about Seven Dot Studio butterfly effect paper collection and to use it to make some beautiful art. So I hope to keep you inspired. Well, let me just say hello to everybody. Hello, hello, how are you and welcome to my studio. Uh, uh, <laughs> it's Finn over here and today I want to show you the Seven Dot Studio paper collection called Butterfly Effect. And hopefully this time we are not going to have any unexpected issues. And uh, for those of you who are unfamiliar with the Seven Dot Studio brand, this is the paper company from Poland established probably about eight years ago and then it was active maybe maybe nine oh, time goes quickly uh, and then we were focusing on the quite unique look of the mixed media papers at the very beginning seven dot studio was um, releasing the collections by me and uh, other polish artists and then uh, it uh, started to get uh, international artists as well. For example, Didi Catron. And the biggest difference uh, with the uh, Seven Dot Studio papers to any other paper company is probably very uh, thick um, and mixed media quality paper. This is expensive paper to print on, but there is a reason. This is not just scrapbooking paper. It's supposed to hold uh, mixed media techniques and this is the best paper that we uh, picked from all the whole range so it is okay with painting on it it's okay with spraying and it's really lovely when it comes to uh, adding some textures with the stencil and <clears throat> this autumn <laughs> um, after some discussions and brainstorming uh, we've decided it is time to uh, try to reactivate uh, the company and to put some of the Seven Dot Studio papers on the market again. And this is how we made this uh, paper collection. We've got um, uh, we've got twelve by twelve inches papers, and we have a paper pad. And I'm going to show you both of them quickly. And then I'm going to make some you know relaxed, fun project, including papers. Uh, layering and images, something between a canvas and a scrapbook page, and of course, uh, including a lot of mixed media techniques. Uh, 
So uh, first of all, I want to say huge thank you to all of you who are joining. I have to say this is our second attempt because the first one, unfortunately, uh, last Saturday didn't work out because of the terrible YouTube glitches. So I hope this time everything is going to go smoothly. I will surely uh, show you all of the papers and explain uh, some of the patterns which are visible and how they look like. But you have to um, believe me that the um, detail that you can see on the paper is really, really amazing. So they've got a lot of mixed media looking details already applied of them on the top. So if you want to have instant background for your art journal, or for your scrapbook page or for the canvas. If you want to get mixed media look, but you don't want to put too many layers yourself, they are a great choice. Um, hello to everybody. I can see people joining from all over the world. I can see people from United States and from Canada, from France, from Ireland, from the UK and Brazil and Peru and Norway. So if you'd like to help a little bit uh, to make this live stream more visible, you can give thumbs up to the video. This is one thing that helps a lot. And second, post it on social media. If you are one of the groups which are about uh, my products, for example, Finaver and Friends Open Studio, you can uh, uh, stick this link into, into that group and uh, it is going to be uh, visible for more people. And of course, you can share it on your social media as well. So um, that would be more uh, helpful for everybody. Hello to people from Poland and from the Netherlands, Holland, Scotland, Sweden, Mexico. It's getting very international here. And um, I uh, really want to say a huge thank you for joining and for being here on Friday evening of my time. So um, just to give you some, you know, uh, information in case if something goes wrong and, for example, I disappear for a moment, uh, don't go anywhere. I will try to bounce back and get the record reconnected. And if it doesn't work, I will try to throw you another link and if still, uh, for example, it's buffering for a long time, you can always try to refresh the video. That helps a lot. <coughs> so maybe we are going to start with a little bit of a look at the papers and then whoever is uh, planning to join and uh, to watch the live stream, to um, have a nice chat, to learn some techniques. Uh, you still have a chance to uh, join, of course. If you're watching the replay, don't forget, um, you can uh, always uh, go to the groups and look for the support and ask questions. We have a very nice group on Facebook called Finnevar and Friends Open Studio and you can share your work in there and you can also get all of your questions answered. Uh, that is um, one of the places that is very, very user-friendly. Uh, people are usually super helpful and this is a great place to catch some mixed media inspiration. Also, if you'd like to see more of the projects with uh, butterfly effect, my design team members on the finavar.com website and on our YouTube channel Finavar Art Files, they already started using this collection as well. So you may see some cool inspiration happening now, ca coming in the next day, uh, in the next couple of days. So stay tuned. We try to post on Facebook, we post on Instagram, we even post on TikTok. So there's a lot of different ways to get connected and to share your work by tagging us and uh, to see the inspirations that we prepare for you. So I can see more people joining. That's wonderful. Uh, we've got people from Germany and more people from France. Uh, that's great. If for any reason you can't watch the whole live stream live, uh, it's going to stay on uh, my YouTube channel. It's going to be recorded. So you can always come back to that later and uh, see the parts that you miss. 
or uh, maybe you know create along uh, maybe make a project inspired and watch everything carefully step by step uh, some people prefer to first watch and ask questions and chat and then when they have more time when they are not as distracted uh, to replay the, the whole thing and then uh, try to <laughs> create something inspired by the project uh, okay we have I don't you may be the first one from Spain Sue LF <laughs> so uh, that's a great... Oh, Kialaya is also from Spain. It's an international party, really international party here. So, what I want to do, I want to show you the papers. I want to show you a project I made just on Sunday uh, together with my beautiful group because now uh, I'm hosting online retreat called uh, Into Autumn. And it is all about uh, creativity uh, and uh, finding inspiration and celebrating uh, abundance of inspiration through our journaling in mixed media. And uh, the project is partly based on the butterfly effect uh, paper. So I already have something to show you. So hello, everybody. It's great to have you all. Now I flip the camera and I will show you the papers, talk about them a little bit. And then we're going to move to the project cre uh, creation. So stay with me. Okay, let's see how the camera goes. Oops, I went a little bit too far. So, last time I was trying to show you the paper collection and it died. So, hopefully this is not happening today. So, uh, there are six double-sided papers. And uh, what I usually do... <laughs> what I usually do when I design papers, I make one, part, one side more busy and the other side is more like a background paper. So... Uh, it's like if you want to have instant effect, if you want to have a lot of elements, you have you have one side and then the other side of the paper is much more plain. So you have space for your uh, stenciling, for your stamping, for uh, spilling and splatting the paint. So all the fun techniques you may uh, apply. And of course, it's really up to you what you want to do. Uh, I told you the paper is really thick, so you can play on this anyway and because it's butterfly effect it's all about travels it's about vintage inspirations and of course about butterflies so the elements that are going to repeat quite often here uh, these are butterflies vintage snippet tickets stamps and um, uh, mixed media layers so this is the one of the papers this is called warwick gardens Every time the name comes from something on the paper, so there is Warwick Gardens text here. And this is beautifully layered texture. It looks like it is 3D because uh, the way it is uh, detailed and uh, printed. The secret is these are real paper layers that were prepared and made into a paper and then um, of course, I was working on them digitally as well, but a lot of these textures, they really exist in real life. So you can see that it is a part of, really, of the project I made in the past. And uh, I was thinking it's really cool uh, effect. So this is the busy side that is going to give you some inspiration. And this is the other side that has some nice tapes and beautiful texture of the um fabric but also uh, a bit of the text and of course the butterflies so this is paper number one this one is called uh, this night only and there are some details that i already uh, was trying to show you last time these are uh, parts of the uh, theater tickets 
And uh, these theater tickets you can also find in the um, stencil I released with Prima not so long ago called uh, Theater Night. So it's a perfect match if you'd like to use the same kind of uh, stencil, the same kind of concept, you can go uh, easily with this stencil if you have it in your stash. And here again, we've got the butterflies, which are uh, really nice black and white, uh, semi-transparent designs. And then stunning texture of the ripped and crumpled paper mixed with fabric and gesso. So there is like instant effect a uh, mixed media look, even without making your fingers dirty. So that may be a good thing or a bad thing. And then you've got lovely layers of paper with perforation and uh, on the top of that handwritten text, which is in fact probably some cooking recipe because I took it from the old, uh, recipe books and there's something about eggs and there's something about mm, seeds and other things, so I guess this is a cooking recipe. The other side is much more delicate and you can see there's a big tea stain. There are beautiful layers of the paper and the fabric and gesso again. And we have the butterfly elements repeated. So it's a vintage vibe, but in a more um, soft and uh, feminine way. But of course we stay in the grungy uh, palette. Next is the uh, first of the papers with the map. This map is uh, South America and I added some layers of the tapes and some big stamps um, from the post office. So it's all getting this vibe of communication, traveling and so on. So here's an old map of <coughs> sorry, Paraguay and Argentina. You can see probably parts of Brazil as well. And this all is in very nice muted colors. So there will be shades of green, shades of blue, a bit of pink and purple. So all of that is very delicate. So you can basically go any way you want from here. And the colors are not going to be overwhelming. The other side is again, paper and fabric layers with tea stains. And there is beautiful texture of the fabric visible. And then there are some very cool details of the fabric on the top with stamps and notes. So all the things I love are packed in these papers right away. So, okay. <laughs> oh, you just finished the layout with this sheet. Oh, I can't wait to see it. <laughs> It's a very nice paper collection, but I have tomatoes on my eyes. What is it called and who is the manufacturer? This is, as I was mentioning before, Seven Dot Studio Papers with Three Navarra, who is, of course, me, and Butterfly Effect Collection. Mm -hmm. So, um, the next one with the map, uh, it is, again, a combination of stamps taken from the post office, some... Uh, handwritten text, a little bit of the butterflies, and the big map of Canada. Uh, the part with Quebec. Uh, and again, there is fabric texture in there as well. So the very, very delicate canvas texture. So if you like these kind of things, it's perfect for you. This side of the paper is great when you uh, want to have some quick backgrounds. Also for junk journals. If you want to build your pages, uh, having some vintage vibe for card making, for any kind of uh, journaling when you uh, want to have this vintage um, look. And of course, for scrapbooking as well. It's really whatever you would like to do. The other side is less busy. Uh, <laughs> Um, and this is a combination of the ledger books and some stenciling you may recognize and paper layers. So here you can see the paper layers, which look like they are real. And then stenciling again, stencil you may recognize if you know my papers. This time we are looking at um, the stencil, very dirty. Uh, which is called Iris Tapestry. So I use this one. 
it's enlarged. You can see I use that to make the texture on that page. So you have, again, instant effect and beautiful tea stains, paint stains, perfect for starting. If you need some inspiration, you can just throw your colors, your textures on the top of that, and you can create right away. So this one is called Airmail. <laughs> the previous one I forgot to say, Carte Postale. And then, of course, I forgot, uh, <laughs> I forgot because I got too excited. So this is just me. Um, we have two more papers to go. <laughs> uh, yes, the headline, did, this is the name of the collection. Sorry, I will try to edit the title of the live stream a little bit to make it more clear. But... Uh, yeah, I guess I was just hoping everything will be going nicely. So I got a bit too excited, maybe. Uh, this pa paper, Inward Journeys, it's all about tickets from all over the world and also some beautiful lace and paper textures. You can see them here. Again, it's a part from one of my projects. So there's the texture of the fabric. There is texture of the old paper and perforated paper and a lot, a lot of cool stuff repeated on the other side as well. And then there are multiple tickets from different uh, locations, including Isle of Man or Manchester or Wildon or uh, <laughs> I'm not sure exactly, but mostly they are British. Most of them are British. There's some also Polish text here. So this paper is called Inward Journeys. And it's really, really vintage. And on the other side of this paper, we've got a beautiful starting texture, a little bit of the tape on the sides. And just next to that, we've got um, this gray blue tone uh, textured paper that is in fact a book cover and this book cover has some old um, old looking um, textures it was used a lot this was touched a lot and it is scratched so it has really really cool effects again this gives you a lot of space to work on so there is some framing done for you uh, but you don't have to use it. You can uh, make it smaller. You can use only just part of it. But if you go for 12 by 12 scrapbook page, this is ready to go. <laughs> yes, I will post a link to the Seven Dot Studio Papers collection once I finish st live streaming. I am only here alone. So I can't really uh, post at the same uh, unfortunately. I can only write a small comment. So whenever uh, you have questions, uh, don't be, don't be uh, uh, shy to ask. I will try to answer. And then, of course, these products, um, hopefully, um, I'm, I'm able to link uh, for you to see them online um, in the description or in the first comment. So, this is the paper. Oh, thank you. Mateusz is here. So, he sent you the link to see the paper collection. Thank you very much. So, here we've got the last of the papers. This one has some stenciling, as you can see, as well. This time is the big Harlequin stencil I did years ago. I don't have it in my hand at this point but it's somewhere in my studio and here we've got beautiful uh, crackle textures ready to go together with the stamps and again some texts so it has some great look right away on the other side similar thing less of a text but just the structure visible beautiful crackles for you to enjoy And uh, I've got a bit of the darker sides and then inside we've got a lot of space to play. So this is how the big papers look like. And together with them, there are three uh, one-sided papers. 
for the elements to cut. And I had to pick the elements that will be going together with the topic of the paper. So there will be some repetitions, like we've got some tickets, some uh, mm, postcards, sorry. <clears throat> We've got uh, stamps of different sizes, but also there is, of course, selection of the butterflies, the same ones I used uh, for the paper collection. And then some cool vintage images we can cut out and use in uh, our journal or as a part of the scrapbook page. And uh, also a bit of the cabinet card uh, photos. So if you have buffering, this time I'm afraid... This is on your side. So if you have buff, try to refresh and that may go much better. It goes smooth on my devices. So it looks like this, this time the signal goes out in a correct way. So here in Ireland, it goes smoothly. <laughs> Luckily, the buffering has nothing to do if you're watching the replay. Oh no, just no, no updates this time. So you can cut out the elements. Here is just one of the tickets. It looks very real when you cut it out. And of course you can include it into your pages. And the second one is the collection of butterflies. And these butterflies are taken straight from the old book from the old encyclopedia. I have even kept some of the original names and they look very vintage. They have this grain that will be coming from the colorful print in the past. Uh, they will have a little bit of the imperfections in them and they've got the color palette matching the, uh, the whole paper collection. So you can use your butterflies in any way you like. And as I was mentioning before, if you like using paper dolls, first of all, we have some paper dolls here and you can combine them with the butterfly wings. But just even to show you... Um, <laughs> very popular product from Tim Holtz. They easily, they're going to match different uh, sizes of the paper dolls, depending if you have the big ones or the small ones. So if you like adding butterflies to people's back, uh, this works really well. So that's another idea. I'm looking for the smaller person, but I don't have any. But you can just see how this is going to work. This is one of the techniques I really like. I really like using wings. So this is the full page of old looking wings of different kinds. And you can um, you know, use them as a focal point or like element in your page. Finally, the page with tags. Tags are really nice element for layering or for adding um, colorful accents in your cards, in your mixed media layers, in your canvases, whatever calls your name. And this is taken from different papers, but it ha they have some extra details such as uh, circles of paint or some stitching. And of course, you can easily cut them out and use them in any kind of creation. These papers, the cutout papers, they are one-sided, but this is exactly the same great quality paper. So don't, um, don't worry about the uh, thickness of the paper. It's really great. And finally, we've got the same, uh, the same version of the papers, but in six by six size in a little pad. And the pad has uh, 14 designs and 32 sheets of papers. So that is really a lot of paper for the people who prefer smaller sizes or uh, for people who would like to uh, maybe um, just get a trial version. So <laughs> it, it really means that we have four papers of each kind, double-sided, 
So they look exactly the same as the big ones, just a smaller version. Then we've got um, all of the six papers repeated four times. And the only difference is there are no tags and there are no um, elements. There is uh, the tags, sorry, but there is uh, a combination of butterflies and elements on one of the sheets. So instead of having the full sheet of butterflies, we've got vintage elements together with butterflies repeated four times in a form of the um, slightly different paper. And then we have mini tags of different kinds. So these are the same elements, but shrunk <laughs> to uh, work better with the smaller projects. Have you got any questions before I'm going to start uh, some simple mixed media project with you? Well, simple. Some fun mixed media project with you. Um, because I've got some plan and I would like to work on that. And if you have any questions, if you would like to um, maybe ask about something, I'm here, of course. And um, again, thank you so much for watching. I am here in the name of myself as a paper designer, but also uh, as a Seven Dot Studio uh, paper designer, so I can answer as much as I know. Uh, there were questions last time about the um, shops that would carry the product. Uh, there are shops in multiple countries, and I know about retailers in Spain, Greece, and uh, Peru, uh, United States, uh, Poland, uh, Sweden, United Kingdom, Ireland. Uh, these are for sure. And um, I made a request already to make a list of the uh, possible of the retailers who uh, who've got uh, the papers already ordered or already in stock. So if you have that question, if you'd like to know which shop is uh, nearby, uh, which shop can ship it to you, uh, you can always ask in the Facebook group or here in the comments. Um, and that is uh, going to be, you know, possible for me to copy and paste some information for you so you can make your life a little bit easier. There's a question, will Seven Dots come back? It's my favorite brand of all times. Well, it all depends how people will respond to the papers. It's not easy to come back with the paper collection after such a long break. So the more you are going to tell your local shops that, uh, yeah, you want to buy the papers, uh, the better the um, sales are going to be, like the more people are going to use it, the more more likely uh, there will be another Seven Dot Studio collection coming in the future. Because it all depends um, on the perception, you know, how people like them, how, what people are going to say, uh, if they're going to request that product from the retailers. Uh, that is the uh, the best way to really help the brand come back on the market. I know the uh, Seven Dot Studio owner, she would love to do uh, some uh, more of the collections, but of course it all depends uh, on, um, on the matter how this one is going to work and uh, how the people are going to respond to it. Okay, we are discussing something technical <laughs> and I am not sure exactly what does it what does it do, but um, I'm very grateful that you are helping each other and I really appreciate that you are so quick to answer the questions in the comments uh, because I'm not always able to do that myself. So before we're going to go to the canvas and we're going to use some paper to create layers and add some um, rusty details and play with the colors to make maybe more splatters. I just want to show you something uh, that I made uh, using Seven Dot Studio papers uh, this week. I made one journal page including some of the elements and I made a collage uh, using some of the elements of this collection. All of that was done as a part of my online retreat. 
um, which is one of the classes I'm teaching right now. And uh, I will show you um, uh, these projects right now. Okay, my video is not in sync with the sound. I'm going to disappear now, so it's not going to be that bothering anymore. So this is the paper. <laughs> and there is a journal page I made just um, <laughs> uh, just yesterday, to be honest. And I included a little bit of that collection um, into the journal page. I will try to hold it and point out the elements. Of course, I used the butterfly wings. I used one of the stamps here. I used the ticket and another ticket and one more ticket. And that is uh, just like for fun. I was cutting out elements. The other elements I used are my rabbons. Uh, that I made with Primo Marketing, so this is the ribbon. And other ones are just random elements I used, but I really want to show you fun detail. If you can see this lady, one of the Team Holds girls, she's got aviator's hat on her. And this aviator's cup or hat, it's taken straight from, from this guy. I cut his head off. And I cut out the aviator's hat, and it was fitting perfectly on the girl's head. So, you know, creativity is the limit, and that was just so fun. So, I just wanted to show you how I quickly, quickly included some elements. This is just a journal page from my Into Autumn online retreat. There are some other pages, of course, we were doing in the meantime. But this is the one that has uh, some of the elements. And the second project I want to share, also from our retreat. <laughs> um, I was making a collage. This is the collage that I made uh, with the group of the uh, students, my autumn artists. And I will try to maybe... Yeah, there's no... Uh, the glare from the camera is kind of annoying, so let's go this way. I used one of the papers as a background and then I applied uh, my stenciling and different details and a lot of paint on the top. So you can see painting that wasn't hard. I used the paper with the mm, tapes as a starting point. So I will show you the paper. I'm going to see it. But then I went really overboard with my techniques. I just went crazy. So <laughs> this is this paper. Maybe you can see it when I, once I'm showing you now. There are more layers of uh, um, tape added as well. And then I was doing stenciling on the top. And <laughs> of course, when I was making the collage, I also used some of the butterflies to make this nice dynamic effect. So you don't really have to use them as uh, scrapbook pa papers. They are really thick and nice. You can use them for uh, mixed media techniques and you can cut out elements to add to your projects easily. So these are just the quick ideas how to use some of that. And today we are going to make more masculine project to work on the canvas. So in a similar way to what you can see here. And I hope it's going to be a lot of fun. So <laughs> this is uh, one of the projects from the Into Autumn Online Retreat. Uh, this weekend we are going to make a big project of that class. It's also recorded, so if you feel that you would like to explore the world of art, journaling, creativity and collage and mixed media, you can always look at my Fidover Art Studio website and check into spring, into summer, into autumn online classes. These are amazing, uh, really amazing uh, retreats filled with uh, knowledge and um, very important matters and discussions. And of course, they're all focused on creativity and learning how to get more confident with yourself as an artist. 
So now, time to create. I was planning to make some more masculine project. Um, and I pre... I prepared one of the photos already. This is a vintage photo, uh, reprinted, <laughs> and I put it on the piece of the cardboard, so, you know, chipboard, which is going to keep it flat and nice. It's almost like a cabinet card. So this is going to be part of my composition. And then I've got a lot of different elements prepared in advance that I want to use uh, in my composition. There are some rusty elements, there will be some electronic elements, be some mold elements, whatever calls my name from that tray, I want to include it into my uh, canvas. So it's going to be a little bit of the uh, dimension together with quite a lot of junk. I hope it's going to be fun. And now the first decision is what kind of color we would like to go for. One of the ideas is to use this paper and the second, of course, the second one that has very subtle uh, elements is the one with the brownish background. So the Warwick Gardens. Warwick Gardens has beautiful brown tones and I'm really tempted to use this one as a start. Um, because that sounds like a great plan. Okay, so first of all, I need to cut it smaller so I can stick it on my uh, canvas. Well, the other option is to go lazy and just stick it directly and then cut over the excess. But I want to add some layers, so maybe... I'll do it this way. So this canvas is 20 by 25 and a half in centimeters. So this is what I need to cut to start with. I will take my paper trimmer, if I will find it. Hmm. Well done, you. <laughs> okay, if you want to know who is the most crazy person ever, that's me. I prepared the paper trimmer and now it's gone. So what can we do? Come on, paper trimmer. Nothing is easy in life. I leave you with something nice to look at. I could, I could, ah, here it is. I found it, of course. Now I can see it. <clears throat> yeah. So let's start with uh, adding some really basic fun texture. I'm ripping the paper a little bit, preparing some space for adding some, you know, extra paper, maybe some ticket, maybe some lace. Once I will have some fun ideas it's always going to be easier to slide something inside of the pocket like that so you know a bit of vintage inspiration you never know what you may need so i'm just going to rip the paper a little bit yes if you have very bad problem with uh, 
watching that live for some reason, there are two options. One is changing the device. So instead of watching on your uh, computer, you may watch on your mobile device. And that helps surprisingly to some people that makes a huge change. And the second one is uh, to watch the replay because there will be no buffering. And it works this way. But this is the sad reality of uh, social media. If, if I want to make live streams, I unfortunately have to be prepared that some of these things are going to happen. I picked more interesting part of the design uh, from the right side of the paper because the photo will go more on the left. So there's a chance I'm going to see my butterflies and I'm going to uh, have the chance to really enjoy the textures I created. So now <laughs> the trimmer is here. So I can cut more paper in the uh, short future. Now I need some gel medium to stick it down and then we can always add some little details here and there. For example, the tape or some lace. I've got some little lace leftovers. I've got these really cool elements of the lace here. And I've got quite lovely yellow tape. This is just masking tape from the shop. A little bit more, more light masking tape. Some tape from the pharmacy. And more tape from the pharmacy. So let's start with adding a little bit of the texture to the canvas. So maybe some parts of this tape, they're going to be visible. So the edge is going to look a bit more fun, you know, just to create something to look at. Hello, hello, everybody. It's good to see you guys. And thank you so much for joining for the chat. No, oh, well, that's a very good story about the lost trimmer. I, it's it's uh, very true when it comes to <laughs> losing some of the things. You never know what may happen. They show up in the most unexpected places. So it wasn't too far. It was sitting in the basket with the lace and I was looking at it, but my brain decided not to uh, show it to me at that moment, just so I have a reason to panic. I guess that's how it works. So now when I'm going to add these uh, of the nicer textures to look at, it's not going to be just white. Uh, let's add a little bit of the fabric tape as well. Okay, you want to stick to yourself, no problem. So for those of you who don't really know me in person or you never uh, took my online classes, you may realize that I'm a quite clumsy person and I do things like everybody does. Uh, I'm professional when it comes to techniques and explaining things and I'm focusing on teaching. But in reality, when I create at home, when I do now for you, I'm kind of clumsy. I lose things. Nothing goes according to the plan. And I think it's just better to be uh, straightforward about things like that and not pretending we are perfect because nobody's perfect. So if you feel that you have no idea what is going on here and why I'm so out of control over my things. This is just life. I find them eventually. And if something drops on the floor, it's fine. Sooner or later, somebody's going to pick it up. If not me, 
that may be my dog, for example. So maybe let's add a little bit of light somewhere. Video was lagging before, behind the chat. <laughs> I have really, I have the worst experience in the with, with the YouTube in the last days. Let's add some lace because why not? We're going for the vintage vibe. Hello, hello, good to see you here. Let's take whatever we can from this part of lace. We're going for the nice grunginess, so whatever happens is right. F5, okay, that's, so that's the magical key on the keyboard that makes the refresh. Hmm, I had no clue. Now you can take any other, any thicker medium to stick the elements together. I'm just going to be quite simple because we're going to use heavy body gel for embellishments. We can at the same time use it for sticking the lace on the edge. It's not about being perfect, it's just about having a little bit of something to look at. So you can move it a bit to make sure it's nicely visible. And it's going to be a nice detail to see later. If we do it on one side, then for some good balance, we can repeat the same idea on the other side. Ah, if by any chance I won't see your question and it's an important one you would like me to answer, uh, keep posting that question. And if I don't see it after a second or third time, make it large, like put it in, in, in the <laughs> big letters so I will be able to see it. Okay, so we added a bit of the texture on the sides. I have still some leftovers, so I can do the thing on the top and the bottom as well. And then, of course, we're going to stick the paper and plan the composition and add some texture. Okay, now, sticking the paper. So for this one, we need something that is going to get applied easily and quickly. So maybe not exactly gel medium. It's hard to spread it with the brush. It's very, very thick. You can take soft gel or th even 3D gel, but soft gel is going to be um, consistency of the honey. Soft gel is uh, also very sticky, but um, much more liquid. This is half empty now but still it has this lovely creamy um, texture so now i can stick the paper and i don't have to stick it perfectly because we want the edges to be uh, um, lifted a bit uh, elevated we want them to be crumbled crumpled uh, so i just put the gel medium in the middle part of the canvas instead. Gel dries completely transparent. This is matte version, so it will be with the matte finish. We won't see it because it's under the paper, but if you use it for gluing down your elements on the top, it's invisible glue. Let's stick it. And then I put it on the side. I press it down 
from the other side as well because canvases they like to bend. Okay, not too bad. We've got kind of nice neutral vintage background. <laughs> and we can always lift some parts a little bit more if you want to. Later, if you feel inspired by that, you can add some paper clips in there. You can add some decorative pins whatever calls your name. Now, this paper has already some pretty texture, so you can just keep it this way, or you can add even more, especially here around the photo, we've got the space that is a little bit more uh, plain. So either you can work with the concept of adding more tips or adding some stenciling or doing both. So, because I love stuff and I love to add uh, layers and textures let's do a little bit of the tape it's going to be very delicate uh, detail and on the top of that we can play a bit with the stencil the photo is facing the person the photo is facing that way so um, it will be kind of awkward to put it closer to the right side uh, I will put it closer to the left, so this uh, guy will have more space here uh, for uh, looking at some embellishments. So I don't have to be perfect with the layers here because most of that is going to be um, covered by embellishments anyway. Uh, those of you who could see my projects before, you know I am really into putting a lot of junk on my projects. I really enjoy that process. So sometimes the layers I make as a starting point, they may maybe not be that visible later. That's a part of the creative process. Okay, so some horizontal and some vertical lines. Yeah, lace, absolutely. Uh, lace is an instant vintage effect. So, why not, right? We have usually quite a lot of leftovers of fabric and lace because this is something that is not so hard to get. And well, we can include that into our mixed media projects. So, if we would like to add some stenciling, I would probably go for transparent stenciling. And if you like to have uh, transparent effects, you can use 3D gloss gel or 3D matte gel. It's thicker than the soft gel we used for gluing. It is really beautiful paste. And uh, you can use it for sticking the smaller and lighter embellishments as well. And it's much easier to spread than the heavy body gel. So let's take one of the stencils that go nicely with the collection we've got here this uh theater night we can add a bit of that texture in the selected parts of the canvas just to give it more of the vintage vibe again perfection is not needed because we don't see the whole design we only see small parts and after drying the gel medium is going to turn transparent so i'm going to add some uh, text here on one side and then a little bit on the other side maybe let's start with this side platform ticket very nice texture and then we can add a bit more here on the other side Of course, gel medium dries quickly, so if you'd like to avoid any um, permanent effect on your stencil, it's uh, much better to clean it quickly after using. 
So right away after I finish, I can put it into the sink. So oh, you can partly see the texture now. It's going to be completely transparent. But once we uh, are going to use some colors over it, it's going to be nicely visible again. If you don't want to ruin anything, it's probably better to dry it first and then add extra. But I think this is enough. So we've got nice three starting points. And now we can add some more paper layers to fill that. Uh, the easiest way for me is just to cut some papers into square and rectangles and then build some composition. And uh, later I'm going to add dimensional elements to, to that as well. So we found the paper cutter. It's great, so it's much easier. Um, this is not my regular trimmer, the one I usually use is bigger, but it wouldn't fit here. I can't move the light, unfortunately. This is uh, ceiling light, this one. This is unfortunately the ceiling light and there's not much I can do. I will try to think about some other solutions for the future. So I'm cutting that into kind of random rectangles and squares. I'm using the leftovers of the paper I used before. So the same Warwick Gardens, but uh, the back of it. You never know what may be useful. And then some strips, maybe. Okay, this is a very ugly strip. I'm not good at cutting straight. So, unfortunately, this is what it is. Now let's take maybe one more paper. I had some leftovers here. I have leftovers of the ticket page. Oh, you can even see I was using gel medium here and I can add some extra details. Inward journeys. This is the paper that I used to uh, create the background for the collage I was showing you. Sorry, where's this cutting line? Here. Okay, whatever. Sorry. So this way I make a lot of little scraps. And of course, if you have some leftovers from the previous projects, this is the perfect moment when you can just take any papers that go with your idea and cut them into strips, into rectangles in general, into smaller pieces of different kinds. So they're going to give you something nice to look at under the uh, whole uh, composition. So we have this. Let's add a little bit more. Again, that's gel medium and now we have more of the little strips. So I keep my photo on the side. I'm going to use it to measure where I can <laughs> fit the elements so they will be visible. This is really nice strip with a lot of numbers you can use for something, some accents. And let's try to build some layers.
So now, you can dry your gel medium a little bit, so you're not going to make any smudges. You're not going to ruin the text. You can see it's already getting more transparent in some parts. And once it is dry on the top, you can touch it easily with the finger. And although the gel is still maybe a little bit white, it's going to be permanent, so nothing is going to get damaged. Now, I can touch, it doesn't stick to my fingers, which would be fine. So let's look for some nice layers and then we can have a look at how the photo is going to go. So we can add the text with the ticket here, a little bit of that. I can't promise it will be visible, but you know, these are leftovers from the previous projects anyway. So it's not a big problem if something is going to disappear. I'm trying to make uh, quite like a selection of interesting edges. This is a little bit too blue, so I'm going on that side more. Hmm. That's a good start. And again, you don't have to stick it perfectly because it will be easier to slide some more of the layers if it is um, simply loose. So I'm going to just stick it more or less in the middle. One, two, three. These are just leftovers uh, from the uh, the butterfly effect uh, paper collection from the paper that I used and uh, I'm using the same 3D gel as for the stenciling it's here and oops it's going to hold the elements in place easily so so far I have quite a lot of pockets if I want to slide something under if I would like to add like, more interesting detail maybe some lace maybe some tickets some little um, elements it will be easier for me because i don't have to rip it i can just go and add another layer this is really pretty so i'm going with that as well in the meantime you can tell me what is your favorite way of using pattern papers what kind of projects do you do are you more into journaling or card making or making scrapbook pages or mixed media collage projects because <clears throat> there are many many ways you can use the pattern papers so it's really interesting for me to know what is your favorite way Hmm, maybe one more layer here. You can use the same way the tags if you like them. So I'm just going to cut one of the tags and add them into the composition. But now I keep thinking, how can I fit one of these numbers so they will be visible. I like to make books. Mmm, that sounds lovely. And uh, I love junk journaling and of course mixed media. 
yeah, this paper is b good both for mixed media and for art journaling because uh, especially junk journaling because it has a lot of vintage vibe in it and for the books because you can use it for making the covers mixed media journaling and cards so cards are also popular i'm not sure how do you feel about making grungy cards is that something that you would consider because it's a bit more on the grungy side So you can see the layers I made so far. And then the photo is going to sit on the top of it together with some embellishments. So we create interesting looking background. Mm -hmm. Mix me the collage, but on the small scale, like tags. Yeah, of course, tags are beautiful little pieces of art. I think I'm going to take one of the tickets from here and I will take one of the smaller tags because they look really cool. Let's pick the tag that is going to fit nicely. Maybe this one. Tags are easy to cut out. This is great because I'm not great at fussy cutting. So tags, they are doable for me. It's nice to, uh, to bow up the side of the papers. Yay! I agree. It's extra texture and it's something that is adding a bit more of the interest to the project. Grungy cards! So more steampunk and masculine vibe to the cards, I guess. So we have a tag. I can make a hole in it and then I can add it somewhere as a nice finishing touch. Yay, that will be great. And then let's get one of these tickets. Okay, I'm also going to take a stamp. The stamps looks really cool. Punching the hole in the tag. And then cutting out the stump. And the ticket. <laughs> There's a comment from the Dorothy saying that she was feel also feels that the it's a waste of using double sided papers for collage and journaling. But you know, um, sometimes you just want to have a chance to lift the paper and to see the results. But I, I know what you are, which place you are coming from. I have majority men in my family, said uh, Dreamwoods Butterfly, so Terry. And uh, <laughs> so having more masculine grungy cards works so much better for me. That's true. I really feel that grungy cards are a little bit underrepresented in the creative world people mostly go for tra traditional uh, elegance and the ones which are more with the um, let's say masculine vibe maybe with more of the uh, darker tones in it hmm, they are not so easy to find 
I'm just adding the ticket as an extra detail here and there, you know, like ephemera touch. Sure about the stamp yet, I will keep it here. And I need to find the tag. Okay, here it is. <laughs> I lost the tag. Let me add a bit of the thread to the tag. I've got some of the silver, but I don't like the silver part. I'm just going to use white. I'm trying to make an anniversary card for my husband. It's today. Why do I leave these things to the last minute? I know. Sometimes it's just hard to find a moment. And then we have this deadline and we do everything quickly. Ah, uh, <laughs> yeah, sometimes you have to cheat Dorothy. Exactly, Louise is right, and this is what I mean, showing the, that other side, so having the folds. That is a nice thing. So it's always a fight, you know, between one-sided or double-sided papers. Let's give this one a chance, maybe here. So it's going to hang over. No, I just make it shorter. So it already has some nice texture to it. And now we keep these papers just in case for the next project, or maybe we will need to add a little bit more. You never know. Now we can look at the embellishments and try to add some uh, dimensional effects. Uh, you can look at the chipboard. You can look at the metal embellishments. I try to gather some things that are mostly rusty and have more you know, of the masculine vibe because the photo is more masculine, of course. So to glue them down, it's much easier when your gel medium or glue is thicker, it's going to hold them in place nicely. So heavy body gel is easier to use than the 3D gel because it dries faster, it holds the elements in place. So from the really cool elements I've got, I've got this part of the measuring tape and this is really cool. And I can use it as a top part over the photo maybe. It would be nice to see it, to be honest. So <clears throat> okay, let's start with this. I've got a frame and I was planning to use the parts of the frame as a parts of a composition. So it's going to be broken into parts. So you can see both sides of it. And then look at this. I've got so many rusty details. I just have to pick the best possible things. And then the photo is going to hang over them. So. It's not going to be a problem that the photo is so far. So this is one package of goodies. Um, and <laughs> the second part is like a mysterious tin of different things. I think they're mostly rubber. I have no idea what they are, but they're surely rusty. So they will be nice touch. I try to put them somewhere here so I can see them. I've got some light bulbs and some bottles. These are coming from one of my molds and they were cast uh, with the uh, white resin and transparent resin. So maybe something from here. And um, I've got some of the 
rusty leaves, just in case. So in general, the concept is once you make dimensional composition with elements, you start with the big things and they are like the construction of the uh, project. They are like the first step. And then you go to the smaller ones, smaller ones, and finally you go to the smallest. However, our focal point here is the uh, quite large photo. So to make sure it's going to fit, we have to come back with it multiple times and check how much of the background is really going to be visible. So it's good to have it on hand. I also have some of the little poppy pods. So they may be really nice touch and look how nicely they go with the color. So let's go with that. I do have a selection of different shapes and sizes. My first choice was to the frame, but instead of using that in a regular way, I wanted to uh, break it and to use it a little bit closer to sides. So I need to use some tool. just breaking that in a more controllable way. I also have a lot of little gears made with the molds so I can easily add some details here and there. You know what I mean? I'm trying to make this. It's cheating, but it's good cheating. So this way I can make it work a bit better. Oh, so it's not a circle anymore. For us, it feels still a little bit like a circle. Just have to find the right position. Yeah, this tag is on the way. Oh, I have to move the tag because it keeps getting... Mm. covered so I'm using the, the heavy body gel to stick the first element in and then I continue with the second one Sorry. Okay, that should work. Frame as a starting point. Now we can fill it with some fun looking details and elements. For example, we can slide a bit of this uh, super rusty metal part it's a part from the old clock so the factor of grunginess and then again we see how it goes it's really pretty and it is in a nice clash with the butterflies as well let's see what else i can find i've got this and that's another fun grungy detail i'm just trying to think where i can use it so it's going to be visible it's not going to work too well i've got also some frames so now it's auditioning time i'm looking for the best parts that are going to be the bones of the whole composition the things that are going to be nice you know, 
nice looking and I remember I wanted to combine it with the tape so there's no point in putting too much in here hmm. these big circle elements but we also have these rusty elements yeah this is a very old very rusty flower we have multiple options to put it in there so it's going to go over yeah and then we go one and of course once we start building a cluster like that we can use it as a starting point to add some extra details and touches so let's say i'm going to add more of the frames in that area yeah exactly family pictures are always the best like i absolutely love family pictures this is my fa old family picture as well so it's going to work lovely as a project i can put on my wall I would like to add some of the nails as well. So to make them stay in place, I will have to secure that part with something, but I have a cool trick. Yeah. First of all, let's add a bit of the floral parts for your Mm, flower my son is holding to a grungy Christmas card I made with him uh, with the seven dots yuletide oh yuletide is history yeah that's really old but such a nice um unusual christmas collection i absolutely agree oh this is cute this is really nice light bulb i think i will be tempted to use the light bulb from the christmas tree if not i can always use the light bulb from the mold So I'm just using random elements, but I try to build composition quite close to the place I started. So everything seems to be close to the frame and close to the flower. Oh, come on, stick. And then when you have too much gel, you just take an ugly brush and you pick it up. <coughs> I'm doing a fin of our drawer with my gels and mediums products from you right now. What a view. I can imagine a lot of goodness. <laughs> Okay, let's see how this goes with the photo hanging over that. Looks kind of good. We need some more of the action going on here. Hmm. What can I st what kind of stuff I can put in here? Maybe one more flower, but a little bit closer to the bottom. No, this one goes here. For the good balance yeah i don't like the flower here it has to stay on the frame absolutely that was my problem 
big blob of gel and we glue it down. So here I've got empty space and I can put some rusty stuff in there. Or maybe a gear. This gear is going to be just right. Another one from the molds from this release. The more unusual things you're going to put on your canvas, the more inspiring and fun it is going to be. So now this composition is going to go together with that composition. So I guess I need to put some things together, together with that flower. So this goes in here. And then of course we need some good company for that. So what can we add? Maybe a buckle. Because buckles are fun. You don't look at the color of the embellishments, you just put the composition together. You can always change the color later, adding gesso and paint or waxes. Now it's just the matter of the right composition. So we are looking for the things that makes us uh, happy and inspired. A spring. Mm. So that goes like this. I've got some space on the bottom here as well. Oh, that would be lovely. Ha <laughs> ha. Okay. We were waiting for you. Very nasty old piece of something. That is just gorgeous. Then we have a piece of tape going here. And then what kind of other stuff we have? This is really pretty. Well, it will be heavy, but we're going for masculine, grungy vibe. So why not? I have no idea what this is, but it's dark and rusty. Maybe a piece of leather. I wouldn't be surprised if that was leather. I can see here. Hmm. This is quite cool. Have you got any technical questions, guys, or anything you would like to know? Because now I'm just gluing down elements using heavy body gel and I can always talk about something in the meantime. I'm building two main parts of the composition now. So I have two clusters. They're not going to be very big, but quite fun, I guess. Okay, let's look what we can do with the screw heads. Ooh. One really wants to go in here somehow. 
that will be a big challenge I have to lift it and then put it back again Why the lace under the paper? Um, that's a very tricky question for the texture to make it look a bit more finished and because I think it looks nice and vintage. You know, this project is a clash of a masculine elements and a little bit of the romantic ones. So I was thinking that may be a good idea. But you may not agree. Hmm. I'm just relaxing and watching. I love gluing things. I'm trying screw heads now in different locations and I moved this light bulb a little bit too much so I will add more of the gel so it will stay in place. Gel mediums, dry, it's easy to dry it with the heat gun so if you have composition like that and you would like to start to paint soon it's not too hard to uh, dry it with the heat gun and then continue little skull hmm of course the most surprising details are the best ones This is also very old and very burnt embellishment. A screw. I'm trying to make some more space so you can see what I'm doing. There are always some small things you can use as finishing touches, like screw heads, pebbles. But as you can see, I started with the larger elements and then I'm looking for smaller ones and smaller ones. So this is basically how the creativity goes. If you would like to build multi-layered composition, you have to add um, a bit of the elements together. And the best way to make them fit is to work in stages like you know you are adding something big and then smaller smaller and finally really tiny hmm. I feel there's something missing on the top So you can see how this is going to work. This part feels a little bit empty. Hmm. Maybe I can find a nice gear that is going to fit into that space. Oh, perfect. One of my um, embellishments. From the grungy gear set. Again, cleaning up the excess. Ah, oh, I stuck it in the wrong place. In the empty spot. Hmm, 
fitting and checking. Maybe one more screw. Ah. Here on this side. And I think we are close to drying it and adding some finishing touches, such as small buttons or pebbles. Hmm. I think we are missing something on the top. Looking at that. Something small. Maybe a paper clip or a frame. Yeah, the frame looks kind of cool. I'm afraid it's a little bit too heavy for the top, to be honest. That was a good idea, but not for this one. Mm. We can also use one of these. Something that will sit on the top. Hmm. Let me think. Almost there. Okay, a smaller frame may work, but mm -mm. so in the end, we are going to add. Uh, paper clip so now we've got our elements ready we're going to dry them and we're going to paint them with clear and white gesso so we can add our colors to the top <clears throat> All the other leftovers are going back on the tray and they're going to be used in the near future to make something else. I only leave the little screw heads because they're really nice for uh, finishing touches. And we've got, I think, quite nice grungy composition. Yes, color is coming. Don't worry about that, uh, Karen. It's the next step. Uh, we start with the random elements and then the colors happen once we start uh, painting the project. So it is much easier for me to build everything first and then to add the color once I uh, know what I want to do. Oh, sorry. Mishkin. Don't do that. Sorry, my cat decided it's a great idea to rub uh, on the <laughs> tripod. So, you know. Go, go, go. Joys of uh, working with uh, animals. 
they they've got their own opinion on the things okay so we've got like a not as aggressive paper clip on the top we've got quite a lot of paper visible now i have to push it all down press it nicely so the gel is going to grab every embellishment because i was going back and forth with this photo and once it is dry, I'm able to apply the gesso on the top. Gesso is a primer, so it's going to help me repaint all of the elements. Some of them are beautifully rusty, so I'm not going to change the color of them. But uh, maybe I'm going to give a touch of color on some of the selected parts. And of course, we need a splatter of color to make it more vibrant and more colorful. I picked mostly just ru rusty embellishments, so it's easy to uh, follow the combination uh, of colors we have on the paper. But if I wanted, I could repaint it any color I like. And I still have this stamp in red color, so maybe, maybe it's coming. Now my fingers are covered in gel medium, so before it's going to dry completely dead on my fingers, I will start drying it. I will leave you for one minute. And <laughs> I will just clean my fingers so I'm not going to get stuck to my project by accident. Much better, I can feel my skin again. And I go all the way around with the heat gun, trying to make sure all the elements are going to stack nicely. So we can apply clear gesso, or maybe wipe some parts, like for example, this guy. But you know what, I have a plan. I'm going to only use clear gesso and then we're going to add some color using waxes and then we will splatter some color in the background to add the burst of color that one of you mentioned. So surely we're going to go for the vintage vibes. So I would stick to the rusty and brown, but I would like to include some gold as well. And not all of the elements are going to be repainted. Like, this is so pretty. I don't want to kill it completely with the color. I would love to see the rust. So the first product we're going to apply is the primer. It will help me repaint every element, no matter what the color is, no matter what the material is. Gesso is going to turn it into matte and workable finish. Clear gesso is not going to change the color of it. It's going to only give me the matte finish, which is easy to work on. And of course, I make my embellishments really hot, so I have to be careful touching them now. 
but the more dry the gel is, the more sticky it gets and more solid. My favorite color is rust. Well, I'm on the same page, I guess. Now, because I was using really uh, strange looking uh, products like the 3D light bulbs, uh, which are real objects, uh, there are some places where there's quite a lot of gel visible. Not everything is possible to remove, but there's easy trick to get rid of that. You can cover that with some texture, pretending this is what you wanted. So now, after adding just so we can also sprinkle some of the microbeads or uh, little prills such as art stones and they are going to cover all the things that we don't want to. So first clear gesso and then maybe sprinkling a little bit of some lovely texture and then we're going to add the color. I take the brush of the medium size and then I go on the top of the embellished paint. It's much easier just to give a coat to every single one just in case. The paper clip has an image in it, so I will try to avoid painting the image that much. But the one that needs the most attention is the one that is uh, the frame, that is made of resin I poured into my mold. So it's almost like plastic. Then anything that is metal, stay there. Ah, oh, you don't want to stick here, huh? You will. Don't you worry, little one, you will. Yeah, these guys, they were not dry yet. I should give them a little bit more of drying. But here, drying process was very successful. So I'm just going on the top. In Because just so it's clear, even if I'm going to paint on the top of the paper, nobody will see it. It's going to turn matte and invisible. These guys are rusty and beautiful. I don't think I need to add too much color here, so I will just do a bit. I'm mostly worried about this part. I'll put my hand on the other side and press it down. Buckle. And it completely with the heat gun before adding any texture or anything else. Have you got any questions, any concerns so far? Maybe you're wondering why on earth I'm using something or why I, do I use so many different products or, you know, anything that you would like to know. So all the products I'm using, the gesso, uh, heavy body gel, soft gel, even the stencil and the texture that we were using, so the 3D gel, all of that is from Prima Marketing Art Basics Collection, the collection I made with Prima to uh, invite people to a world of mixed media. So they're very user friendly. You can always use them to uh, create the dimension, to uh, put papers and elements together, to paint, to change the color. So there's a really cool range of the products out there. As you can see, the more I dry, the more transparent the gesso gets. So it's not a big deal. This is kind of gray. So if you look at the image and the embellishments, it looks like I should add something that is going to have some 
uh, gray tone in it as well. We don't really have a lot of gray. So I can go with some silver color on the embellishments or I could add some paint that is going to have gray tone because for now the background is very warm and the photo is very cold. So it's good to uh, keep that in mind so everything comes together more naturally. Now, a little bit of the extra touch, mini art stones or any kind of micro beads, so they look really <laughs> very much like the little sand. I take a smaller brush and I will just apply it in some parts when I think maybe we need a bit of texture. So for example, here in the part where there was this gel blob or maybe here on this it doesn't have to be a lot it's more like to add interesting texture and give it a chance to look a little bit more fun and then we sprinkle that on the top and we dry it another element of the granginess You can always tap off the excess and you will have um, really cool looking results. So it's like um, seeds <laughs> or maybe some kind of sand. It's really up to you to decide what um, what is your interpretation of the product, but in reality it's really, really cool to cover potential um, not so pretty effects. Anniversary card is finished. Well done, you give yourself a pat on the back. You still did it today. So, you know, that counts. I never make cards on, I have to say. I'm so bad at card making. My cards are just so dimensional that they don't fit into anything. And um, I kind of, I think I don't believe in my card making skills. <laughs> Okay, so I'm just going to top off the excess of it. So you can see it sticks really nicely. It has some of the cool textures. It's really perfect for adding some little touches and the paints are going to go nicely into that if you want to so i guess we have a lot of quite cool details i'm not going to use uh, matte gel anymore so soft uh, matte gel goes on the rack however <laughs> i just realized i still have this hmm. so let's see how this is going to go together because it was part of the plan, right? To use it here. Of course, not so big. I need to break it. Hmm. I guess we need to... Uh oh Okay, it wanted to break here. It's going to break here. I'm not going to say anything. That was meant to be. <laughs> so this will go later on the top. We can use it as a space for the little sentiment as well. Photo goes away. We dry the 
um, the art stones and then we can start thinking about applying the color first i would apply paints so we have these bursts of color visible and then i'm going to do the uh, finishing color with the wax the embellishments are going to be mostly colored with the waxes and i think we're going to go with a bit of a silver to match the photo and a bit of some hmm, white gold or um, burgundy Burgundy made or copper. Copper sounds really promising with this rust. Um, and for the bursts of color, I would love to add some gold to it. Just look at this copper with this rust, it will be so cool. Um, I have really good color here. Flame. Metallic paint. I've got sparks just of gold. Beautiful with the golden edge. I'm not a fast card maker either. Some of the elements I used were uh, already made, just glue them on. Yeah, but you know, I'm still, I always feel like my cards suck uh, big ways. So I buy my cards from my card making card uh, craft friends. I know it's not my strength, so I just support them instead. Even when I do make cards, it takes me about four hours for one card. Exactly, I'm on the same page. I have hard time making cards. Because I always put so many things there that in the end this card is overflowing and I spend like half of my day on it. <laughs> I'm guilty. Mm. I would start with this and see what happens. So I will need to... <laughs> I will need to make this paint a little bit more fluid so it's easier for me to make splatters. I want to add metallic because so far everything is matte finish. Uh, so at this point, I just need to make it a little bit more fluid. So I'll take it on the palette. But I will add a little bit of water so it's going to be easier to um, make it flow. It doesn't have to color my, my embellishments really. Embellishments I can always rub with the wax. That was the plan. Uh, I want to add a little bit of the color to the background. So, if you don't know how to do it, you can always think in triangles or threes. So, let's say I'm putting a bit of here, I'm putting a bit of color here, and then maybe a bit of color here. And it looks terrible, but I'm going to let the colors flow. And dry them to see what is going to happen. Okay, I discovered a spot where I put clear gesso, so I can put a bit more of that here. So it's going to cover that. And you can see how the tape is resisting as well. Very interesting effect. We can use that for our advantage and add some cool effects. Let's try and see what happens. This color has a lot of beautiful mica powder in it. I think we need to add some vintage brown to it. So maybe some burnt sienna. 
because the brown I've got is very gold, so I don't think it's going to do the job exactly the way we want. But we have very nice start with the color palette. So now the copper is not going to work. I'm going to try burgundy instead. No, this is not the one. Well, I don't think it's going to work this way. Hmm. Maybe not burgundy. Maybe firebird. Now I'm going to take a bit of brown with gold. Again, more of the shiny stuff. And again, I'm mixing that with water because this paint is old. So it's not going to be easy to clean it off the brush. Yeah, this touch of color makes a big difference. This one has tons of beautiful gold in it. I'm going a little bit overlapping with this flame metallic paint, but not exactly. I'm also going in the spaces that I've never been before. And again, the water makes it flow in an interesting way. I would take a little bit on my brush just to show a bit of the stenciling in the background as well. And you can see the Seven Dot Studio papers, they take the water easily. There's no drama happening because of that. There's no problem. We can add the generous amounts of water and the paper stays in place. It doesn't rip, it doesn't have any issues. So that's great. That's the whole point. Hello, Brenda, good to see you. Let's think. Hmm. Now I have to make the selection of the colors of the embellishments. We know that silver is going to work, but I wonder what else. You can see I just used the colors I wanted. Like these are so neutral paper. You can do whatever you like on the top. And of course, I will be adding a little bit of the color to the sides as well. Um, for example, I can make my brush wet and go deeper under the layers of paper if I want to and add a little bit of this golden brown. Or I can keep it white as it is and just add the color on the lace. So you can see the structures here are visible in a lovely grungy way. And now with this gold, this yellow makes a lot much, much more sense. So if I would like to add the color to the lace, I can just go and add a bit here and there. And then there's a bit of water as well. Usually my projects are ultra dry, sorry, ultra, ultra wet after I finish. So before they're going to get dry, it takes a while. But it's okay. It's really nice to see the results and how everything goes together. When the paper is wet, you can really roll it with your fingers. Really. So this is how you can add some extra color to the lace as well. This is like finishing touch, but I wanted you to see it. So you, if you wondered why do you put lace in there, now you can see the result. 
I'm missing a bit of the contrast close to the embellishments. And because I added so much of the gold, I think I'm just going to stick to the simple combination of the aged brass and silver. But I think we really, really need to see dark brown as well. We're almost finishing with the colors. We have the burst of the um, flame. We've got out of the um, uh, gold in here. So let's take the neutral brown, so the burnt sienna of all the people who love vintage. This is liquid acrylic, so it doesn't have any metallic in it. It's just brown. Mm. And this brown is just transparent brown, so it's going to add really lovely touches. Transparent brown is always good. It's another color to make your um, project more vintage. Sorry, I told you I'm clumsy. going to make it a little bit darker and create a little bit more the visual drama and if you still have some parts where your art stones are not painted it's going to do the job so here we go it's also helping you to tone down this flame color a little bit if you feel this is too much but it was supposed to be colorful, so it is. Now, um, drying and rubbing the wax. I will need to add a little bit of the lighter things like um, silver to the background but it's going to be maybe just a splatter we'll see how it goes first i need to rub the color on the embellishments so i'm going with aged brass this is like the safest wind if you don't know what to do you can always go with that and it's going to go with the papers really nicely as well You can see this um, brown burnt sienna turns almost invisible, just makes parts of the project darker. We have so many cool layers and so many textures and the print is still visible. So this is exactly what we wanted. And then again, we can always add a bit of this brown to the background, to the lace. So we have more of the tea stain effect. I can always use leftovers in the, for that step if I want to. Okay. Let's imagine I uh, dry that. Let's take a bit of the aged brass wax and I'm going to add the color to the embellishments using a brush. And then I can rub a bit of my silver on the top. This is like the combination I keep using every time when I need to get some vintage colors together as you can see it's just neutral brown metallic and that's a great start for so many um, projects 
You don't have to do everywhere, really. Just wherever you feel that it may be too dark. So, for example, on the top of this flower. What else? This frame. The frame is probably the most uh, important part that we need to add color to because it is resin. So we have to pretend it is metal. So I'm adding the color of the wax in there. Oh, this is still wet. So water doesn't like um, the wax. It's better to dry before you apply too much. Vintage gold is really lovely, but we, we already have a lot of gold here. And I was afraid it's going to be too much. So we will see what happens with this. It goes really beautifully with the color of the paper. So it's a good choice. You can see it's almost the same color as the background. So neutral, which is kind of safe. Okay. I think this aged brass wax. always add a bit on some metal parts even if they are very dark it's not going to be a lot of harm <laughs> let's see if I didn't miss anything important I add a little bit on that flower as well Okay. So we've got grungy looking colorful, colorful splatters of color. We've got more organized, rusty embellishments. The photo is going to go on the top of that. So surely we need to tone it down into a bit of a silver because now it stacks out like a sore thumb. So here's the color I didn't see. There is a desperate need for some brown in here because it's white and it feels absolutely awful because of that. Waxes, they don't like the water at all. They don't like the paint. But if you want to add some delicate touch here and there, it's not going to be too hard to do, especially if you put quite a lot of paint. So it is possible and doable, as you can see. Same problem here. Just go in. It's good to see it before it's, you know, glued down. I just found one more spot. Here. Okay, done. Then we need a little bit of the silver highlight that's going to go nicely with the photo and then we can work on the finishing touches how do you like your palette so far how do you feel about the project
Yeah, browns makes everything good. I absolutely agree. I'm multitasking, so I'm drying and painting the lace at the same time using the leftovers of my paint. Once we dry it, we can wrap the wax. And apparently this part needs some gluing, so I'm going to stick it now with the gel medium. You can see the paint uh, dries partly glossy, so the thicker the liquid acrylic is, the more shiny it gets. So it's really up to you how you're going to use it. Do you want to put a lot of paint and make it shiny and uh, glossy, or do you prefer to have it watered down and use it as a stain? Let's cool it down a bit. We can now maybe add a tiny bit of the shine to it as well. Just to catch a bit of a sparkle. It's not going to change a lot, but it's going to match better to the background. I don't have a silver paint that would be nice for splattering, but I can splatter white and that may do the job on the background really nicely. All right, so silver. This right side, Jules. Okay, I'm happy you like it. It's a lot of grunge, you know, in one place. So now I'm going to highlight with the silver. So you can see why I'm doing that with the silver. It goes just right with the photo. And if I stick the photo as it is now, it will be um, just feeling awkward. But if I rub a little bit of the silver touches to it, it will fit so much better. And this way you can clean up some parts of the composition that maybe got a little bit too grungy for you. Maybe you went overboard. You can see how this quickly changes into something else. So this way we are able to give a little bit of the makeover to the project as well. The petals of the flower are always hard to rub correctly because um, <laughs> it's hard to put your finger in there. So I, tr I try to use the brush. But I used that brush for the brown before, so it may not work exactly the way we want. It's not about changing that completely. It's about adding the lighter touches. So the photo we have here makes more sense. You can also give a bit of a nice edge to this one. So now I look at it and I see if there's anything that needs a little bit of a extra touch and texture 
and the main thing I see, I'm missing silver back, uh, things in the background or white things in the background. So first of all, I will try to find some kind of solution that would give me these silver splatters. I can try splatter silver paint or I can go with the paint that has a lot of silver. I just need to find the right color. Actually, once I water it down, this is going to work. So, okay, I painted everything with... <laughs> I like the way it looked when you turn it upside down. That means my composition is really balanced. <laughs> it could work this way. If we had the photo... Uh, well, just this poor guy, he's upside down now, but yeah, it's nicely balanced composition. So let's give a chance to this solution. This has tons of silver mica in it. So if I'm going to add water to it, and splatter this and make some silver splats that should give me the silver tone i'm looking for let's see you can see how much silver it has so there is a chance it is a lot of gold that's why I'm looking for that balance and I'm trying to pick up something that is going to give me these highlights and break this very dark and very saturated red gold vibe. I'm happy you like it. It's a lot of fun to make things like that. Okay, let's dry and see how this worked. Is this is silver enough? And if not, I can always add white. Okay. It is visible, but this is not dramatically visible. So I guess I can add a tiny bit of white as well. Great way to apply white is white titanium uh, liquid acrylic. And white makes a lot of sense because it's also on the photo. So, you know, I just take a wet brush. I pour a little bit of that white somewhere. And we repeat the same solution. It's again, it's not going to be super white because uh, this is partly tra transparent paint. But together with this um, silver pink, it's going to do a really nice job. So if you sometimes feel like you're color burst is too intense you can break it adding a lot of little splatters over the top 
the easiest way to do it is to have a brush and something hard to hit with this brush. So now it looks a little bit like little pieces of snow. I dry it, it gets permanent. All the paints and layers we do, they are permanent after drying, so we can play the way we like. And if you feel that maybe we went overboard somewhere, you can always add more color. Diluted mica powder, yeah? That would work. I didn't think about it. That was a very good suggestion. I saw it too late. Ah, uh, silly me. Well, now, we came to the point when we can easily <laughs> uh, put the photo in. And of course, my photo is a little bit hanging in the air so i need to give it some support here as well so cardboard or any other solution such as 3d foam squares or tape i have tape here i go lazy way today <laughs> i will just layer some of the um foam let's see if this is going to be all right and nobody will see it this is a little bit too close let's do it here instead see i'm not always great with finding the best solutions and that's why having people on in the chat is so helpful because you come with the great suggestions. Okay, we stick it here and we stick it. Here. That should keep it in place. I didn't stick it yet. I'm just trying to find the right position. Mm. Now pressing that down a little bit. looks quite cool now one thing is adding this one as an important element so we can use it as a frame to add some text if we want to and i can see i'm missing something grungy on the edge of this photo it feels too clean if you know what i mean but fear not i've got i've got stuff i've got solutions let's check this solution first yeah, not bad so let's stick this one And I can even find some text if I wanted to add here on the bottom of it, I guess. Hmm. Maybe. Uh, 
I don't want it to be too big. I have an idea. I had this piece of ticket with some text on it, but I also have some little text from the book. He came closer to me. Ha! Huh. And this it was. And this is how. The universe can send you some important message. He came closer to me. It's in Polish, but uh, I don't think anyone will really feel bad about it. I hope you forgive me. Most of my projects are done in English, but sometimes it's just hmm. Sometimes it's just a matter of <sighs> Okay, my <laughs> my paint is very dirty. The matter of finding the right thing at the right time. Now I'm checking if there's anything that needs maybe a little bit of the extra grunginess. And I think this a bit of the white and silver made a huge change because now this red is not so much in our face. It's a color of the background, but it's not really so aggressive as it was at the very beginning, although it's a beautiful rusty shade. So this is the matter of balancing, right? We were playing with colors. I was pouring them on the paper. I told you this paper is very neutral, brown color, so you can put basically anything you like on it. And because this red was so, so strong and intense, just to remind you, that was Flame from Metallic uh, Collection. Then I used Chest of Gold from Sparks. These were the colors to make the background. The third color, it was Burnt Sienna Liquid Acrylic to add the vintage touches. And to make the colors of embellishments more grungy, the selection of aged brass, which was very close to the color of the paper, and old silver, so that was the coloring mediums. And then for the splatters, I was experimenting with sparks, butterfly spells, it's pink with silver and with white. So this way, um, I was able to tone down this uh, very intense, a uh, very red color. Now I lost the lid with my gel medium, of my gel medium, of course. But it's okay. Okay. I want to show you the uh, close up, so you can see, hopefully on the screen, how everything shines and how the details are done if you like that video don't forget you can share it with your friends and you can post it on your social media and you can give it a thumb up to say thank you and you can go to seven dot studio and maybe <laughs> look at the papers the butterfly effect vintage collection inspired by butterflies and uh, of course, try it by for yourself. So there are many, many ways uh, of using these papers. I, of course, uh, try to show more of the grungy side of it, but <laughs> it's really up to you. You can go in the vintage romantic, in the junk journal style, anything goes really. So uh, I hope that was enjoyable. I will show you that in the different angle. <laughs> I'm happy you like it. Oh, <laughs> I was planning to have a sit on my chair and it's a good thing 
I didn't sit because look what happened. I hope you can see. It's a cat. Meshkin. Meshkin, big boy. No. So, um, it's a good thing I looked because that would be a wet uh, cat pancake, I guess. <laughs> So you can see how it may look on the wall. <laughs> so you can see how the little splatters of paint and the silver goes nicely with this photo. It would be far too much if I didn't add the silver because the photo is so white. So it's good to remember about that. Here we have some kind of a... Uh, established balance between vintage browns and silvers and these kind of color of colors everything is uh, coming together quite nicely although i'm still feel like i could add more silver maybe you know it's really up to you how you feel about it uh, i will try to take photo of it as soon as i can so hopefully tomorrow or mon uh, sunday and I will be posting that on social media so you can look at the details a little bit more. Thank you for encouraging me here and coming back after the um, problems we had last time. I hope you like um, the paper collection and you are going to um, have fun using that, of course. <laughs> yes, it is grand delicious. <laughs> It is grand delicious, and I feel it is a really uh, fun project. So maybe I inspired you to try some of these techniques in your uh, future creations as well. So I uh, hope that was fun to watch and have a wonderful creative time. I want to say huge thanks to all the people who are here with me chatting. And uh, I hope if you are watching the replay, you will give me a thumb up as well, because that helps so much with the visibility of the um, live stream. And, you know, YouTube has algorithms. So the more thumbs up and the more comments, the more popular the video is going to be. And it's easier for other people who love uh, mixed media, crafts and arts uh, to find it. So thank you for being here. Thank you for the support. And, uh, you know, check out Butterfly Effect Papers from 7.Studio and Art Mediums at Paint from Prima Marketing and Finover. And, of course, my embellishments of any kinds, stencils and all of that stuff. It's all there waiting for you. Create art, make, make a lot of beautiful art, because this is what puts a smile on people's faces. Thank you so much for uh, watching. My cat has a death, 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 death wish, apparently. And I hope to see you soon online. Uh, check our social media. You've got all of them listed in the description of the video. And uh, don't forget to tag 7Studio, Prima Marketing and Finovar when you use my products uh, and you post your art online. We, are, we love to look at your creations. Bye! And huge thank you for my patrons. I forgot to say that. Huge thank you for my patrons who make events like that possible. They support me uh, every month and they get, of course, exclusive content, but they also my most, uh, I would say, most faithful uh, live stream watchers. They always come and comment and help. So, Huge thank you to all of you. If you're interested in joining my online uh, videos and uh, classes for patrons, the information is in the description as well. Bye. Like and subscribe. <laughs>